Today we are going through WWE 2K24's gameplay sliders. We're going through the basics here for you so you have a better understanding of what the sliders do, what to adjust and look out for, and hopefully make things a little bit more balanced as you get started. This is a beginner's guide. If you want some advanced stuff, uh, drop a comment on this and let me know you want more in-depth nitty gritty and I'll, I'll try. Once we get in there, you have multiple tabs here for gameplay, presentation, balancing, targeting, and advanced. Looking at the gameplay settings here, you have all your difficulty settings from easy, normal, hard, and legend. Matt plays on hard to legend, but it depends. I'm really having a hard time with pins though. I'm getting my butt whooped. And there's a lot in here, and a lot of this is very, very straightforward. The weight detection, you can obviously adjust if you want more of a simulation style or if you want the arcade style. Sometimes it is actually fun to adjust this one if you want much more of an arcade experience. The stamina is dealing with the consumption of your stamina. Now, if you want it, you can have it as normal or infinite stamina. So basically it will never run out and your guy will never get tired. The pin mini game is an option that does return where you have the timed experience or rapid pin mini game. For timed, it's what the default is where you're gonna flick up on the right stick and then you'll be able to kick out unless you're like Matt and you're a big dummy and you can't get in the zone, but I can help you with the zones for the pins in a minute. And the rapid mini game is when you are just frantically, furiously pressing the buttons down, trying to kick out. And some people like that. Pin mini game first count lock after finisher is set to off, but you can toggle it on. When it's on, the time pin mini game won't accept input until the referee finishes the first count. This is more of a timing thing. So if you leave this off, the inputs count towards escaping the pin as soon as the mini game is visible. Training blows is the new feature in here where you're going back and forth against the AI and it happens once per match and it's kind of random. And I really like having the training blows feature in the game, but sometimes it can be a little difficult to get it in the zone and, and flick it at the right moment. That's what she said. So you can have it off if you guys don't want it to happen at all during the game. You can have it manual only, which means that you can control when you want to do the mini game, which is kind of nice. So if you want to have trading blows right at the very beginning, you can do that. You're gonna have to allow the held input for the mini game. So any mini game in the game, you're gonna press and hold to be able to initiate it. Rope breaks are normal. And all the rest of the settings are very straightforward and normal in terms of post-match run-ins, mid-match entrance run-ins for other people that are gonna come in and interrupt in your match. Blood is off by default. Make sure you turn this on in the game. And subtitles are off if by default too. Tutorial tips will pop up all the time unless you turn this off and you can allow created superstars in your game too. With the blood, this comes up a lot because people will say, I don't get a lot of blood in the game. I get a little bit. I don't see it dripping on the mat. There is actually three different stages or levels to the blood physics in the game. So long story short, you got to do a lot of damage to the person, get them really in deep red and critical, and then you're going to start seeing it show up on the mat. So it does take a lot of damage. So if even if you just bust them open a little bit, it doesn't mean it's going to initiate it on the mat. You got to go a little bit further. You got to beat them down even more. Okay, let's look at the presentation though, because one of the new features is going to be the ramp camera, which you can initiate here and keep it as default for everything. Or you can go into the individual match you are in, hit pause and go to the options menu and then you could change it from there mid match. Really cool that they added this in and I like that it's in the matches themselves if you wanna to toggle it. There are certain matches though where the ramp camera change does not apply. I believe it's like casket match, ambulance match, elimination chamber, I think cage match as well. They don't apply for the camera change. Camera cuts, turn them on and off how you like. Camera shakes, big moves are gonna happen. The camera is gonna actually shake. Camera panning though is one that you should look at because if you leave camera panning on, when you go ringside, the camera is going to adjust. It's gonna zoom in a little bit, but sometimes I find the angles a little tricky and I don't always totally like it. So I tend to leave this one off. You're gonna get a further view from the action. It depends what you like. If camera panning is on, it's gonna get very, very tight. And sometimes you Irish whip them and you get a little bit disoriented where you're going. The spectate controls is that if you're gonna spectate a match and it's AI versus AI, all of the prompts come up in the top left-hand corner for what you can do to just zoom around the entire arena and do whatever you want and look anywhere you like. And I really like that they added this feature. You can have the display of that on or off. This doesn't really matter too much because if you just press down on the left joystick, then you are going to actually 
turn all of that off anyways in the match so it's really up to you superstar hud is what you see on screen with all the hud information for the opponents and yourself the control help and match rating hud this is the one that usually bothers me I don't like having the star rating on screen. I find it distracting and then I get it at the very end of the match anyway. So I like to have that off now. However, it's tied in with control help. So if you are somebody that's like, you want the prompt on screen for finishers as well as your paybacks to appear of when you can do them, then you need to leave this on. But you can look at the HUD would still be on so you could see that Cody Rhodes has a finisher stored. You can use it and then you could just do it yourself. And then you have all of the reversal information and the breaker feedback. You can keep all of those on if you like and post match replay on or off. And the rest is really straightforward of what you want to do. Okay, so now let's look at balancing, specifically with the AI. We're filming this in the first week of launch, and I find that there is some balancing issues. I find submissions are way overpowered from the AI side. Like I am, I am frantically just smashing buttons trying to get out of submissions in showcase and in regular play, and I'm losing all the time. Now, again, Matt is bad at video games. So it's probably a me problem. So I go in and I adjust some of these settings and I find that it's working a little bit better and it does apply to the other game mode. The only thing it will not apply to is my faction. So if you think we can go in there and we can mess around with how this is going to play out online in my faction mode, it won't work there, but it definitely will help you. If you're having issues with showcase mode, like me, I was changing these settings around a little bit, the strikes reversals, the grapples, all of that, you decide how that works for you. Dial this down. It's going to do less of the rate, dial it up. It'll happen more often. The AI submission rate, how often the AI is going to perform submissions on you. I lower this because not a lot of wrestlers do a ton of submissions. Some do, some have submissions, but they, and they will try to do their submission. It just won't happen all the time. So I try to balance this a little bit and I might do between 30, 40%, just to reduce it a little bit. I don't need Omos doing submissions. You can go in and individually go through every wrestler if you want to and change their settings of like omos as an example not doing any submissions period so it won't happen so if you want to get super detailed you can go one by one and adjust every wrestler the way you like springboard attacks dive attacks those things i leave everything kind of standard right now for just going through the basics the entrance run-ins and mid-match run-ins i change these a lot Entrance run-ins, I don't personally like because if I keep this as standard at like 50% or you, you increase it, obviously, the chances are you're going to see more entrance run-ins. And I don't always like that because it interrupts my whole entrance. I like seeing the whole thing. Mid-match run-ins, I don't mind. And post-match run-ins can be a lot of fun. Referee downtime, I always turn this up. If you turn to the referee in a match and you destroy them, you hit them with a spear and they knock get knocked down, the higher you throw this up to like 100%, they're going to be down for quite a long time. So it makes it more realistic that way. Unless you want to play more arcade style, you can turn this all the way down and the referee, if you knock them over, they're going to get right back up. I like the referee getting knocked down. It's a Roman Reigns match. You're going to get that referee knocked out with the spear. They're going to be out for like five minutes at least, right? So this will help you if you want to have more realism. And the majority of the rest of the balancing features here, I tend to just leave it right now. You can go in and tweak this a lot for signature and finisher reversals however you see fit one that i do like to point out though is rollout frequency right now in the game and again they could patch this to make it a little bit more balanced i'm noticing that rollouts are happening way too often so in showcase and regular play it feels like every minute to three minutes in a match i knock somebody down and they try to roll out or my guy rolls out and I don't like doing that all the time. So I turn the frequency down to about 30% and it helps a little bit. And once again, for the rest of the settings here in the balancing, tweak it how you like, play with it a little, the scaling for things of how the damage goes and the difficulty settings overall, you can tweak them how you like, but that's how I leave it if you are just trying to get started here and have a little bit better balance. Now targeting, not much to do here. However, the one thing I do change is target setting for one player is set to manual. I manually press down on the controller so I can target the other people in the match. Helps out a lot when you're doing multi-man matches, tag team matches, because if I set it to semi-auto, it doesn't always target the right people or do what I want it to do. Targeting the managers is left on by default, which is good. 
and targeting the referee, which is a manual thing. I leave that on so that I can manually turn to the ref in any match and I could take them out if I want. So the next is going to be the advanced settings for things like the mini games, the timed pin, submissions, and referee settings. I will do a probably a deeper video on this going through all of the sliders for finishers, the influence of all of them. Right now for getting started, leave all of this as standard. You're going to be just fine for timed pin mini game. This is where you can adjust how the sliders work and the flag speed and everything for pins, how it works for you. So adjust it to your liking. I tend to like it if I put it up on legend difficulty and I make the AI a little bit stronger, then I tend to open up the window for my kickouts and also the speed. I will slow it down a little bit. But again, adjust it a little bit here and there because you can go crazy fast. But sometimes if you are doing a legend match and you are going to be getting really deep into an Iron Man match, for example, that speed can go so rapid you're going to lose and it's not always that much fun. So for flag speeds, there's the easy, the moderate and the difficult pin indicator flag speed. This just means how deep you get into the match and when pins happen. So for easy pins, it's really early on. You're taking basically no damage there's a pin attempt how fast is that flag moving back and forth moderate pins midpoint in the match how fast is it going and then difficult pins meaning very deep in the match you're pretty beat up it's late how fast is that flag going to be moving this i tend to just try it out at about 40 percent around there and see how i like it i want it to slow down a little bit i like the matches to go a little bit longer for the zone size that is how big that like green bar the red bar is in between for you to kick out how big is that and again same thing for easy moderate and difficult pins the zone size itself i keep it at about 50 percent I don't need to adjust it right now. And then the kickout zone speed. What's the kickout zone movement? How fast is this going to be? Again, I slow the speed down so it kind of goes hand in hand with the flag speed just slightly and see if it's going to work any better for me. Then we have the submission mini game. This one I feel is a little bit more important right now because I do personally feel it could be me, but I feel like submissions are a little bit off. They're way too grindy. It's button mashing craziness and I'm losing a lot. So you can adjust your speed your penalty, your strength when you do submissions as the player. And you can also adjust how the AI is doing for their strengths and penalties when it comes to submission moves getting applied. I'll leave right now for beginner's sake, leave all of the player stuff as 50% as standard. For standard submission stuff, I really won't touch much of this. If I press the wrong buttons when trying to apply a submission onto the AI, I might make the penalty a little bit less. And my strength, I might make it a little bit more powerful. This also does apply when you are going to do things like casket match and you are going to do ambulance match too, because your button mashing in that is technically a submission. But for the AI, their attacker button press strength, their penalty if they do something wrong trying to get out, I lower the strength a little bit for their attacker press strength. And if they are defending a submission, lower those down a little bit. Remember at the very beginning, when it came to the actual balancing of the AI, we turned the submissions down a little bit too. So they're not going to do submissions as much. And this way too, we've lowered the difficulty just a hair. And I actually found that this helped out a lot when I was doing showcase and exhibition. The other one is going to be special guest referee settings. Now there are new settings in here, obviously, because it's a new match type. So you have the bonuses for fair actions, unfair actions, the penalties for it being in good positioning, penalties for inaction and poor positioning in the match and the referee replacement countdown duration. Basically, if you are going to be doing good things and being a good solid referee, fixing the turnbuckle, getting rid of weapons, counting pinfalls on a good speed, good timing, reacting very promptly, all of that is going to be in your favor as a ref and not getting eliminated or removed if you keep that setting on. Remember, you can turn off the special guest referee settings so that you never get tossed out and go crazy. As we're beginning with all of this we don't really need to change very much i turn the penalty for inaction and poor positioning down a little bit because sometimes i'm just not getting into position i'm getting distracted i'm doing something else i might want to do a slow pin count on purpose have a little bit of fun but i won't get hit with much penalty if i do that the big one for me is going to be referee replacement countdown duration i put this all the way up to 60 seconds so it's how long a replacement referee is going to arrive after the referee meter has completely emptied you lose all of your momentum that referee bar goes down to zero. New referee is going to come out. How long does it take? You give yourself 60 seconds. That way you can go mess around and dish out more stunners if you want. Another quick setting to look at too is going to be your audio volume. I turn all of this stuff way up. 
And then if you are a creator like me, or you don't want to have the soundtrack going on with the entrances, put it in creator safe mode. You turn that on, it removes and it turns off the jukebox and it turns off the entrance themes too. So if you're on YouTube, then you don't get hit with any copyright strikes and you're good. And the final piece to look at too, everybody is just going to be controls. And this simply just to highlight to you, if you're having any trouble understanding what is going on, what to do if you are a manager, a referee, using the weapons, how to throw things, throw objects, or if you're spectating the match, what all the different cameras do, there's a ton in there for you to look at. And if you're looking for more info on 2K24, like my faction, what's new, we have brand new unlockables that are available in there too. Click this video right here, because this is going through all the basics for my faction, giving you all the rundown, everything you need to know. Have a great day. See ya.